Hi! Oh my God, it's been so long. It's been so long. Um, so, hey, I'm Samus. I'm a producer. I'm a rapper. I'm a PhD student. And uh, so much has happened since the last vlog uh, post that I made. <laughs> so I'm going to try to be as concise as possible. But it's like even today, like four or five things happened that I want to talk about. So it's like, huh, let's see if I can if I can make this under 20 minutes. If I can do this in 20 minutes, I'll say I've done a good job. So let me jump right into it. So the last post that I made, I believe, was like right after I had um, dropped the first single from my new album, Pieces in Space. And that single is Weirdo. It's featuring Homeboy Sandman. Um, and it had just premiered on NPR, which was like huge, um, probably the hugest premiere. He just definitely featured that I had had up to that point. Um, so yeah, it was incredible. The reception was great. People have been messing with it and loving it even since then. Um, and then things were kind of quiet for a little while. Um, and I was having trouble trying to figure out what to do with the next song. So um, to kind of give you all an insight into how this works, for those of you who've never have released an album or, or done it sort of on a, like a big scale, um, this has involved a lot of like planning and figuring out when to drop things strategically to like engage people. And that's, you know, I've had some, some kind of, uh, experience with that, with the, the EP that I dropped in March, but nothing on this level, like in terms of planning. So I was anxious because the second song that I dropped song about sex, um, you know, I, people were like, that's, you know, it's a cool, no, cool song, neat song, but they weren't like, getting jazz over it. when I say people I mean publications <laughs> people like my supporters they always show me love they always prop me up and so um that's that's always actually been really affirming in the face of publications being like no nah, we're good we don't need this to share this or we don't really like this or nothing at all so I was really anxious about that and then spark mag which is a, a really great magazine that that focuses on artists who are um you know who are activists and who are, are uh, radical and, and doing interesting, neat, weird stuff. Um, they uh, picked up song about sex and they um, uh, shared it. So that was really nice. And I had a whole bunch of interviews in that in that time. At this point, it was like mid October, I think. Um, so so that was cool. I had a chance to talk to lots of people. Oh my god, I almost forgot. I went to Geek Girl Con in that period of time. It was October. 7th, 8th. So that was in Seattle. Um, that was super duper fun. Uh, I went in 2014 and this was my second time coming back and it was even bigger. And it was, it was neat because, um, what they did this time that was different from last time was they had like an opening concert that was like 21 plus. Um, and that was dope for me because I cuss a lot. And so I was really anxious the first time I did it because there were lots of like little girls and babies and, and like little kids. I was just like, I don't know if their parents want to have conversations about these words. So what do I do? Um, so this time it was at the Hard Rock Cafe. It was the Friday night before. Um, Bay came out with me to Seattle. So that was fun, fun times. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so the show went well. One of my, my childhood friends came, Liz Love, I love you. Um, and then Shabzilla, who's another um, rapper, a woman who, who's in nerdcore, and she came and to, to say what's up, and she also has a role in, in Geek Girl Con. Um, so, yeah, it was good. I was nervous because um, there were – it was, like, ha after a happy hour, so there were lots of, like, bros around, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm about to talk my shit, and – I feel like some of these dudes are probably going to be annoyed about me talking my shit and we're going to have a nice little conversation. But it wasn't that way at all. I, you know, a lots of Geek Girl Con folks came out and uh, the people who were there were just kind of doing their own thing. And, you know, some of them, I think, were like, oh, this is cool, cool. Um, so it was a good time. And, uh, you know, I wrapped wrap my ass off because it was folks that I love and care about. And, and I wanted to show them how excited I was to be there. And it seemed to resonate. A lot of people really liked the performance. The next day, um, on Saturday, I um, performed at the end of a cosplay contest and had a couple of interviews in the morning. So that was good. I chopped it up with Black Girl Nerds. Um, another interview, I'm, I'm forgetting the exact name. It was like a STEM, like science, technology um, uh, podcast. I chopped it up with... Um, Oh my gosh, I'm free. There was another one. I'm sorry. I feel so bad. There were a lot of different interviews that took place. 
Um, and then I, you know, performed at the end of this cosplay contest that was so fun. And I met this little baby Samus. She was so cute. She had to be like maybe five, six at the, maybe at the oldest. She was just so sweet and adorable. She kept talking and she, I think something that made my heart swell, um, is that she sort of like readily accepted me as Samus. Like she was like, oh, I love you, Samus. I love when I play as you in the game. So she, was, she just kind of took me on and was like, it was it was really moving and cute and nice. Um, and made me realize the, the tension that I have in my heart about um, being accepted um, as someone who can represent this franchise. It's still an anxiety that I have. Um, so that kind of melted my heart and, and eased some of the anxieties that I that I continue to have about that. Um, so yeah, so chopped it up with baby Samus. <laughs> she was like, you, you should come over and like my mom's there and we'll hang out and we'll just play the game, we'll take over the world. I was like, I love you, you're so cute, but I'm not coming to your house. Um, she's so, so adorable. Um, and then uh, what happened? So yeah, that was cool. And then that night, Bay and I were like, okay, we're gonna go out. We had gotten this invitation to go to this cool thing, um, V Satisfaction, which is like an amazing duo, I believe based out of Seattle. Um, they were having like a party. And of course we went back to the hotel. I think we had some like beers cause the hotel we were in had like a free free beers and happy, at happy hour or whatever during a certain period of time. Had a beer and knocked out. <laughs> and then the next day I was on a panel about being a woman in nerdcore. I was on that panel with, with Shubzilla and uh, it was cool. It was well attended. Uh, folks came through. So that was nice. Um, and uh, we just chopped it up about some of the different issues, unique things um, that we face as women in, in who are making this kind of music. And I talked about my anxiety about the term nerdcore and not knowing what to do with that. Um, because I feel like it can be limiting and it doesn't necessarily um, highlight the the kind of racial dimension that I'm trying to bring into it. Like, I think the term Afrofuturism is really a good way to think about what I'm doing. And uh, someone at the panel actually asked about Afrofuturism, which was so cool. It gave me a chance to talk about it and share, like, my sort of ideas about where I fall um, or have my relationship to Afrofuturism. So that was really dope. Thank you to the guy who did that. Um, and then, uh, and then I went to see my friend Liz, um, who, her and, um, her wife live out in Seattle. And so we went to go hang out with them and their babies and it was so cute. And, um, yeah, it was just really nice. And it's, it's weird. It's like, we're, oh my God, we're all grown up. My friend has babies. Oh my God. Uh, so that happened. And then we flew home. Uh, so yeah, it was a really, really good time. Geek Girl Con is the best, had so much fun and, and like it, uh, it's never, it's never like stressful. Like when I'm there, I always feel really well taken care of. Um, and not just as, like as a performer, but I think that like the, the whole staff puts in so much work to making it be this really wonderful, safe, warm like exciting, exceptional space. <laughs> I'm trying to think of all the good words I can say. Um, so it was good, good. And I met a, a bunch of great people that I, I'm still connected with, which is nice. Um, so that happened. Things were still a little bit quiet after that in that in-between time of like dropping Song About Sex and then the album drop. I was still kind of doing some interviews. I, I didn't have any shows. I made sure that I did not take any other shows in October because I wanted to save up my energies for... Um, for the end of the month with the album drop and, and knowing all of the energy and time that would be required for that. And I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that I took that time to just chill, do what I wanted to do, be invested in, in TAing and, and other things. Um, so yeah, that I, uh, two weeks ago or two weeks before the album drop or about a week before the album drop, I released a new video called 100% featuring the homie Latasha Alcindor. Um, and it pr premiered on Afropunk, which was really cool. Um, and it's just, it's just nice to be able to be making music that has such a sort of wide, um, range of audiences. So it's like, I can drop something on, on NPR and have something pop up on Afropunk and have something pop up in some of the other publications I'm about to talk about. Um, but, and it makes sense. And that's, what's really cool. I think about standing at this intersection of all of these places is to be able to, like 
make sense or fit in so many different places. So we premiered that on Afropunk. It was cool. People like it. It's really cute. It's directed by the same director who directed 1080p for me, Vince Lundy. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a fun fun video, LA and I pretending to be, you know, teachers at a school where we just go in on people and teach them how to rap because that's what the song is about. It, I made it after I went to South by Southwest and I saw some performances where I was like, that's not fair. There are people clawing and scratching to be here. I know people who had paid thousands of dollars to be even put on showcases just to be in that space and you're out here squandering the opportunity? Absolutely not. So I decided to make a song about that. That's what 100% is about. Um, so that was cool. And then I, I was doing all these interviews, Ithaca Times, Ithaca Journal, Ad Hoc, um, Ithaca Voice. I had a really great interview. I'm going to post all the interviews that I did below in case you feel like kind of going through them. Uh, there's been so many. Um, I was asked to do a playlist for Talk House, which I know traditionally focuses on um, uh, films, but I think they have kind of a music uh, branch or aspect of what they're trying to do. So uh, I put together a playlist of all my kind of favorite producers or instrumentalists. And uh, before you judge me, it was late and I really didn't want to stay up all night. So it's it's not all of them, but it's a few of them. And uh, yeah, you should check it out. It's a Talk House playlist. Um, and if you type in Talk House in Samus, I'm sure it will come up. Uh, I might also just post it below. So that happened. And then it was like, you know, album release was right there. And I was, I was nervous. I'm not going to lie. I was very, very nervous. Um, because it's like, you know, this is the culmination of several years of work and I, people all week have been telling me like, I've never heard anything like this before. Or, like the perspective that you're speaking from is like totally fresh and different. And that's awesome hearing that on the other side. But when you're going into it and there's no sort of like template for what you're doing, it can be really anxiety inducing, you know, like, is there even an an audience for what, like what I'm trying to do. Like, I didn't know. I really truly didn't know. Like, yeah. So I was nervous that I would put it out there. People would be like, ah, oh, no, I fucked with their other stuff, but this, this is not what I came for. Or, you know, new people wouldn't even pay it any mind. So on the Thursday before the album drop, I'm getting my hair braided, right? I have that, um, I have my record release show in Ithaca that night. And my homie Sad13, who's Sadie um, from the band Speedy Ortiz, was coming to perform there. We did three dates together, and I'll talk about that in a second. But she was coming into town. I was getting my hair braided. So I'm all like, you know, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, and I get this alert that an interview I had done with Vibe a few weeks, several weeks back actually, had just been published. So it was like, I was like, oh my God, it's up. I'm like sitting in the chair. She's doing the the last of my braids and, and I'm like freaking out, freaking out, freaking out. So I'm posting about it. I'm sharing about it. It was like perfect timing, you know, the day before the album release, um, the album, you know, drops and the night of my first show. Uh, so that happened and it's a, it's a cool piece. We talked about, um, you know, just kind of my, my history and, and this contentious term femc which the article uses um a lot of people were like well i don't i don't like the term femc so you should read the article to see what i have to say about identifying artists in terms of their gender because it's a you know frustration that i have uh encountered and and i think there are merits there are definitely merits to to talking about like women mcs because we have a unique perspective and we're talking about things that you know men might not address but to have that be sort of at the forefront often feels a little bit strange. Um, so uh, yeah, read the article, Vibe, I love you. Thank you so much, Donette, for the wonderful write-up. So cool, and uh, that's you know another huge feature. Like I remember making a collage in undergrad and I got a whole bunch of Vibe magazines and cut them out and to, to make the collage on my wall. So yeah, it was just really, really tight. Um, and then like 30 minutes later, this interview that I did with the Mary Sue pops up <laughs> on my uh, on my feed, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm freaking out. So I'm sharing that too. And this was all the day before the show, um, or the day of the first show, the day before the drop. So then I, um, what happened? I uh, yeah. So then I went to the haunt, which is where the venue the venue for the show, and it oh it was also the first snow. So Ithaca hasn't had snow this year at all, which has been crazy for Ithaca. Um, but 
you know, it's the reality of, of global warming. So there had been no snow. This was the first day to have snow. So I was like, no, nobody's going to come to my show. It's cold. It's a Thursday. I was like, oh my God, it's going to be me and the other band. But, you know, had to truck through it. So I go to the haunt. We do our sound check. I go home. I shower. I get myself together. I go back to the venue. Um, and uh, people are, like, there. And I'm like, oh, my God, y'all came. Y'all came out for me. Y'all came out to support the homies who are on this bill. It just felt so fucking good. It felt, yeah, I... I yeah, it felt so good. It felt so good. Thank you to everyone who was able to make it out to that show. I, um, yeah, thanks for having my back. Uh, so yeah, that happened. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, we have brisket. I brought some meat. 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 Thanks, baby. Yeah. I'm really excited to eat. Uh, Are you recording? Yeah, I'm recording. It's okay. Yeah, let's sleep this time. Um, I'm almost done recording. So I'm talking about the first show on, on the Thursday at the haunt. Oh, yeah. Like people came out and like I wrapped my ass off and I cried and we cried together. And it was just so, so good. And Bay brought all his homies. So that was really sweet. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it was like the perfect way to, to finish off the or just finish off, to start off the tour. And I sold hella merch. People were buying records and T-shirts and CDs. And oh, it just felt so good to have that shit. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I got records and CDs <laughs> and everything. I just, like, so too much has happened for me to even really talk about. So it's, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so then uh, we all came back to the spot. Sadie and the rest of the crew stayed with, with me and Bay. With Bay and I here at the apartment, and it was fun. It was like a little sleepover. We had some beers, we chopped it up, and talked about life and love and music. Um, and then the next day, I had class. Uh, I went to class first, which actually I later learned that the professor I'm TAing for, she was like, "Why didn't you tell me? You didn't have to come to class. <laughs> like you could have just gone to New York City." She was like, "Bless you. You're so like diligent." But I, you know. I didn't, I've already have taken some days off for show stuff, so I, I didn't want to push it. Um, but that morning I had a Q&A or like an AMA with, with the Mary Sue. So we did like a live chat and people could write in questions and that went really well. It's just like the perfect way to, to drop an album. <laughs> um, so yeah, we did the AMA, the album drops. Everyone was like, it's this, this amazing feeling when you, you put an album into the world and also you're kind of active on social media that like the first little like bloop will happen and someone's like, I got the album, this is dope. And then this like steady stream happens where more and more people are starting to be like, oh shit, the album's here, oh, the album's dope. They're tweeting you songs that they like, they're screenshotting the like, um, the down, the, the like image of them downloading the thing there. Uh, and all that happens and then publications start tweeting you and being like, hey, Sam has just dropped this thing. So on, watch loud um they they put me on the new music friday along with you know meek mill it's like you know all these other artists there that are a lot bigger than i am um so that steady stream was happening i did the ama with with um the mary sue and then i took my ass to class and then i took my ass to new york city to brooklyn for that show um and uh y'all that show was unfucking real i realized or i was like really stressed because not only is it like, okay, it's a little cold. I know myself, I don't like to leave the house during the cold, but also I'm in a major city and I had a conversation with Mega Ram when we were on tour about how difficult it is to have, do shows in big cities, especially on weekend days. You know, like you're competing with literally every, I'm competing with like Jay-Z, you know, or something on that level. So um, who's gonna come see little, little old me? So it was that. And then in addition, it was fucking Halloween weekend. So I really was in competition with, with a lot of stuff going on. So I was nervous, but a couple of my homies from high school had texted me that they were going to come to the show and they came, which is so nice. Um, and yeah, so it, the, the show was at Alphaville in Brooklyn. Um, and people, the place was like packed. The room was packed. By the time I got on there, the room was packed. Sad 13 killed it. Vagabond killed it and Alter killed it. They were all like, oh, it was my dream lineup. Um, so I was just juiced off that. 
Next day, um, I was in uh, Philly at Philomoca. That was a super tight show. I had pretty much lost my voice at that point because uh, I had a cold at the beginning of the week and I had to try to fight through it. And anyone who's seen me live knows that I go so, so hard. So my voice was done, but I like pushed through it. And, and I think that almost made the set like... I don't know, it added a certain quality to this set where it was like, oh, she's up here really struggling for us, you know, like they were attentive and really sweet and generous with me. Um, but I, I pushed out those tracks and and then, you know, sold some merch and, and that was the last stop with, with Sad 13. But then after that, we went to a, a Halloween party, I met the wonderful writer who wrote the NPR piece on me, Maria Sherman, and um, we chopped it up and yeah, it was just like all of the good vibes happened. So then... Um, the next day I was in Syracuse. We did a show at the museum, um, the Everson Museum um, of Art, which this was my first time kind of being in like a formal art space to perform, which actually that's a lie. I was at the Johnson Museum at Cornell like several years ago, but you know, whatever. Anyways, this was my first time like helping to organize a thing. So it was like a Halloween cosplay situation and like 50 people came to that, which was a crazy, like, we didn't expect it on a Sunday night, a cold Sunday night in Syracuse. Um, but Jessica Posner, who, who basically put the show together, she did such a great job of promoting. Thank you to DJ who who helped to have, if this was like the first show of its kind at the Everson and it was so real. All the bands were fucking sick. Um, this tour has really just been an excuse for me to like hand pick everybody that I want to see live. And then, you know, I get to do my thing after they go and do something incredible. So yeah, that was really, really tight. Um, and then in the interim, so, so the tour, way the tour is working is it's the quote weekend warrior princess tour. So every weekend I go to a different location. You can find the dates on my website, but this coming weekend I'm going to Syracuse for retro game con. And then I'm going to be in Providence and New Haven, I think. And then I'm going to be in, Rochester and Buffalo and New Paltz is in there somewhere. I, there's a lot. <laughs> so yeah, look out for this month and all the places I'm going to be in the Northeast. So yeah, uh, I dropped that stuff. And then this week has just been all about the like fucking crazy press. Like I have been getting love from from just every different direction, from supporters. Every day, somebody's like, yo, I just found you, or I've been following you for some time, and I love your album. And I just feel unstoppable when I hear that. Um, but then I also got love from, from press. Publications were like, fuck it with it. So I mentioned Watch Loud, but also Son of Baldwin. Um, excellent kind of writer and theorist and, and um, thinker whom I've been following for some time wrote this really thoughtful, uh, beautiful review about the project and also kind of me and my work. Um, so that was really exciting. Um, then ABC News, which I didn't even know did reviews, gave the album a four, four and a half stars out of five, not out of 10, um, and said it was one of the best albums of, I guess, of the week. Um, and the review again was like really thoughtful and I received other, other amazing reviews. I think NYU, um, wrote a review on the project and, and all of these reviews, I've been struck by how, um, how like thoughtful they are, you know, cause it's easy to be like, this was dope. She was rapping really hard, but people are like citing specific songs and, and talking about the production style and like situating, um, my music within the rest of my catalog, like things like that, where I'm like, yo, you really are fucking with me because I would not take half the energy to like write <laughs> something like this about a person I just didn't fuck with 100%. So, uh, that was really dope. Then also yesterday, um, I dropped a new video, um, on the AV club. Uh, yay. That's huge. That's huge for me. Um, so AV Club um, pr premiered the video for Nighttime, which is a, a song off of Pieces in Space that features the singing talents of Izzy True. Um, I think Izzy was on tour when the video was shot in LA. Otherwise, I would have loved to have them on the um, in the video, but we, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll do something together again. I feel it in my heart. Um, actually, we have a show coming up in December, so there you go. Bam. Um, and it was directed by Faye Orlove, who's a genius, who's a fucking genius. 
Um, so yeah, you should check it out. It's called Nighttime. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, and then, okay, and then today, today was fucking nuts. So today, uh, I received um, the official go ahead that I can finally share that I will be performing at the Real Future Fair in Oakland or the town, right? Maybe I'm supposed to call it the town. Uh, so yeah, I will be there on the 14th or 15th on the Tuesday of that week. I think the 15th actually is the date. And May Jemison is going to be there. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a May Jemison t-shirt that I want to wear that was designed for me. And I want to perform May Jemison, but I'm scared she's going to be like, what is this trash? And you know, people tell you never meet your heroes. I've met her a few times, but I don't know what the rule is about performing in front of your heroes. And I don't know what the rule is about performing in front of your heroes um, with songs that are named after them <laughs> and about them. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But I'm just so excited for that. And I'm going with Bay. We're flying out. We're doing, I just feel like an actual rock star when shit like that happens. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I got to announce that. And then I had this interview with Fusion that published today that was really dope. And what was really important about that um, uh, interview to me was sharing that you know, it can seem like women who produce music are unicorns. Like people, I received the question of like, you know, it's it's clear that women don't don't produce a whole lot of music. Why is that? And I was able to like pivot and be like, actually, no, because my whole tour is women who produce. It's like basically women who produce music. Um, and so I don't agree with the, that statement. I think that it's more that we don't get the kind of coverage or love. Um, but there's a shit ton of us out here who are making our synth pop records and our hip hop beats and our everything in between. So yeah, um, uh, that's happening. And then I also was featured in a feminist frequency kind of newsletter, the blast that happened today. Um, so subscribe to feminist frequency today so you can check it out. We'll, we'll probably be promoting it more next week a little bit because there's just so much shit that happened that it's been hard to even put that out there. And then I also was, one of my songs, America, which is on my very first full length project, was featured on Bitch magazine. They have uh, mixtapes every Friday, I believe. And this one was about protest and about um, in, in anticipation of the election, like really getting riled up to think about what's important to you, what's important to us, what's important to this country. Um, so yeah, I, you know, my social media has been fucking nuts. I haven't even been known how to like prioritize what to share because I don't like to spam people, but there's so much good shit and it doesn't stop. Um, so yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be at Retro Game Con and uh, I'm, I'm sure I've missed something in here, but whatever. Um, I'm just really excited that the album release has happened the way that it has. I'm going to leave a link below. The top link will be the way that you can access the album. I have vinyls. I do still have some bundles left with t-shirts and um, booklets and um, all that stuff. You can find it down below. So keep supporting the project. Today was the last day for sales to count towards first week sales. Hopefully my album is charting. That would be so cool if it did. Um, to, can you imagine black girl nerd raps, raps that have been categorized as nerdcore to be charting? I know that Mega Ran has had a charting project, and so has Richie Branson. It would be dope to get a woman in there, too. So anyways, um, thanks for listening. I'm just shy of half an hour of talking. Um, I'm going to go eat this brisket. Um, I love you. Thanks so much for supporting. And, um, you know, hopefully I won't wait so long to give an update next time so I won't have to spend half a damn hour. I love you. Bye.